is what makes narcissists regret throwing you away and making other people want to kill you. Greetings, wonderful viewers, and welcome back to our channel. We're truly grateful for your presence here today. We've curated an invigorating discussion focused on the intriguing topic of what prompts narcissists to experience regret and yearn for your return. This video is designed to offer enlightenment and empowerment, so don't hesitate to dive right in. Narcissists often underestimate the value of others until it's too late. They may have previously belittled and dismissed you, yet their subsequent revaluation and desire for reconciliation can be quite puzzling. Empaths, in particular, tend to trigger this reassessment. Their innate empathy stands out to narcissists, who often fail to appreciate the depth of such connections. Narcissism often breeds a sense of superiority, leading individuals to believe they are above reproach. Conversely, we are driven by love and kindness, striving to do our utmost to avoid causing harm to others. Unfortunately, we frequently find ourselves entangled with toxic individuals who sow seeds of hurt and destruction. In contrast, empaths shine brightly for their compassion and empathy. Focusing on empathy following a significant rejection may naturally prompt a reawakening within us. Empathy and discernment are indeed our strengths, setting us apart from others. As you embark on the journey of healing and acceptance following a breakup, the narcissist observes from afar. As your significance begins to resonate with them once more, they reassess your worth and find themselves captivated by your unique qualities. They may find themselves comparing you to their current partner and reminiscing about the depth of your connection. Narcissists may acknowledge their shortcomings and relationships, yet their introspection tends to be superficial. To them, it's all merely a game. Recognizing their errors, they may attempt to reach out to you, though not without challenges, especially if you've already begun the process of healing and closed the door on them. Their fixation on your life extends to monitoring your social media even after you've blocked them. Employing various accounts, including fake ones, they persist in tracking your activities. It evolves into a routine akin to that of friends checking in, fueling fantasies of an unattainable reunion. It's crucial to recognize that closing the door signifies a painful awakening for the narcissist. Should you allow them back into your life, they'll reassess your value but continue along their path, knowing they can always return. Maintaining a strict no-contact policy and firmly shutting all avenues of communication are paramount. Refrain from engaging in pleasant interactions with them. Instead, transmit only negativity. While closure may occasionally seem necessary, refrain from providing positive reinforcement. A few words uttered in the final stages of a relationship may suffice for closure, as I've personally experienced. Finding closure by expressing oneself during the concluding days of the relationship can be immensely liberating. Narcissists re-evaluate your worth, envisioning you as an unattainable dream they long to reclaim. To shield yourself from the toxicity of such individuals, it's imperative to remain spiritually and psychologically resilient. Saving the door firmly shut prevents their re-entry and expedites their process of revaluation. You become their idol, the one they fear losing, yet ultimately do. In the comments section, you'll find anecdotes from individuals who attempted to reconnect after a decade or more. I've heard stories of brief encounters leading to contact years later. As empaths and chosen ones, our energy is unparalleled, rendering them unable to find it elsewhere. You ascend to the pedestal of their obsession when they find themselves without recourse. You morph into their addiction to social media, their relentless fixation. Recently, my narcissist attempted to breach my boundaries through deceitful online personas, a topic I detailed in one of my videos. 
Your influence is so potent that they crave any residual attention you might afford them. Merely hearing your voice, whether through a fabricated profile or an anonymous call, brings them solace. Despite their peculiar methods, your rarity prompts them to reassess your value. Upholding your healing journey and fortifying your self-worth post-relationship will fortify your resilience. I, along with numerous survivors, can attest to this transformation. Rest assured, you will triumph over the shackles of pain and trauma bonds in the initial stages of your recovery. As you rebuild your sense of worth, new avenues of exploration beckon, perhaps even opportunities abroad. Were it not for the absence of the narcissist, I wouldn't have achieved this significant milestone. Establishing new ventures and surmounting obstacles have amplified my value, and the same holds true for you. As the narcissist fixates on the past, their perusal of your social media and other platforms reveals your growth since departing from them. This realization stings them deeply. While they remain stagnant, perpetually altering their facade to align with their current partner and feigning new interests, your genuine evolution stands as a testament to your authenticity. Recognize that they once again idolize you, reaffirming your intrinsic worth. Even in silence, the narcissist mulls over these thoughts. Prioritizing the cultivation of your value is paramount. Enhanced understanding of narcissistic behavior can be gleaned through various avenues, including personal experiences and academic study. I delve deeply into the psyche of narcissists to unravel their intricacies. While some channels may portray narcissists as insurmountable adversaries, my own journey revealed a different narrative, one which I shared on YouTube. Despite their persistent attempts at reconnection, I remained steadfast, knowing full well that they regretted their actions. You might find yourself receiving nighttime calls, perhaps even with their new partner, which explains the peculiar timing. My recommendation, block them, change your number, and sever all ties to deliver a significant blow to their narcissistic ego. That's the strategy. If you're interested in learning how to silence and torment narcissists, be sure to check out my video. But never forget your inherent worth. Whether you believe it stems from God or the universe, your essence is unparalleled. It's not your outward appearance, but your boundless enthusiasm that sets you apart in a crowd of a hundred individuals. Your incomparable energy is the driving force behind this channel. Empaths possess an innate ability to form deep connections with others. However, mirroring the narcissist often leads to the initial discard. Through divine intervention, we aid in the disposal of their trash. Engaging with individuals allows us to penetrate their facade, revealing the narcissist's underlying low self-esteem. This distinction is crucial, recognizing the disparity between a narcissist's facade of superiority and their genuine self-perception is paramount. The discard phase is a pivotal moment as it forces the narcissist to acknowledge what they once took for granted. Upon experiencing the discard, they begin to idolize you, realizing the value of what they lost. This awakening typically occurs post-discard or after severing ties. Creating distance triggers this realization and an early dismissal would have facilitated this process. When you cut them off, they swiftly awaken to the reality of their actions, feeling liberated and elated if they were the ones who rejected you. The reassessment phase commences when they comprehend the stark contrast between you and their new partner. It's essential to acknowledge your uniqueness and count your blessings. Reflect on the progress you've made in dealing with the narcissist. Your efforts have not been in vain, they may resurface unexpectedly in your life, as I've personally experienced. While I once believed my love for the narcissist was squandered, love has since re-emerged in other forms, albeit not romantically. In light of my past grievous error, 
I've become highly discerning about who I allow into my life. I caution you against repeating similar mistakes out of loneliness, a feeling we've all grappled with. Take the time to nurture yourself as you heal and redirect your energy toward other facets of your life. This energy is potent. It holds the potential for greatness when channeled into endeavors such as health, business, sports, or other passions. As you undergo the process of rebuilding, the narcissist is left incredulous at the magnitude of your newfound worth. Strive to become untouchable. While we may have once lowered our standards to accommodate a narcissist, it's imperative that we now set the bar higher. Any individual we allow into our lives must be exceptional. Settling for less in relationships is no longer an option. Entering into a new relationship before fully healing is detrimental. As survivors of abuse, we understand that healing is a gradual journey. It's characterized by a series of peaks and valleys, devoid of constant sunshine and rainbows. The scars of narcissistic abuse may never fully fade, but it's crucial to recognize that it's not our fault. We weren't naive. We simply encountered someone into whom we poured our love and purity, a gesture that ultimately dismantled the narcissist. The process of revaluation commences when we evolve into something the narcissist can no longer possess. Following the discard, they may reassess your worth weeks later, especially if you maintain silence and refrain from contacting them. Initiating contact to reconcile and revive the relationship will invariably shift the dynamics. Such reactions are common, there's no cause for concern. Despite their meticulous study of our behavior, they are often caught off guard by our resilience. We emerge from these trials stronger and more resilient than ever before. We evolve through our mistakes, emerging stronger on the other side. Let them mourn your absence and futilely compare you to others, only to realize your superiority is unmatched. Nowhere will they encounter someone quite like you. As for their supposed pursuit of another empath, consider that they failed to appreciate having one early in the relationship. They likely continued to provoke their ex with reminders of our presence through photographs. They didn't value us then, nor do they now, until the relationship concludes, prompting a belated recognition of our significance. Indeed, absence does indeed make the heart grow fonder. As you distance yourself, prioritize your spiritual, physical, mental, and healing growth, intensifying the process of revaluation. Narcissists are devastated by this reassessment as you continue to heal and flourish. Keep pushing forward, have faith in the journey, and understand that the separation was divinely ordained. The universe orchestrated your liberation from narcissistic entanglements. It's never too late for a fresh start. A subscriber shared the story of their father, who found love in his seventies after enduring twenty to thirty years with a narcissist. They now live joyously, traversing the globe together. Consider the time spent with the narcissist as a period of mental refinement, rather than wasted years. It has enhanced our resilience, sharpened our analytical abilities, and deepened our comprehension of intricate circumstances. Regardless of their whereabouts, narcissists continue to reassess and idolize us from afar. Subscribe to our channel for more insightful discussions like this. If you'd like to support our endeavors, kindly consider donating via the link provided in the description box. Remember, we're here to support you throughout your journey. Stay tuned for our upcoming video. Until then, remain vigilant and serene. This video is tailored for those grappling with the challenging task of acknowledging the truth in the aftermath of a narcissistic relationship, finding it elusive to move forward. To assist you in navigating the post-breakup terrain with a narcissist, we've outlined the top five hurdles you're likely to encounter. If you're eager to delve deeper into this episode, consider subscribing and hitting the bell icon. 
But before we dive in, let me pose a quick question. Where do you find the reality check most formidable? Which truths are the hardest to embrace? Share your journey in the comments, fostering connection and support among fellow survivors. The entire tapestry of the relationship unraveled as a mere illusion. Yes, every thread was a fabrication. You didn't just invest your emotions. Your entire essence was woven into the relationship. The dedication, sacrifices, and unwavering trust you bestowed upon the narcissist were immense. You held faith in their flawed character, believing they were the long-awaited savior. However, the cruel reality unfolded differently. You endured moral injury, your psyche bore the scars of mistreatment. Deception, trauma, abandonment, feelings of worthlessness, and ridicule were the unfortunate outcomes. Acknowledging that the entire narrative was a sham in tales coming to terms with the authenticity of every experience, positive or negative. It demands recognizing that the person who initially captured your heart is an illusion, a figment that never truly existed. If you entertain the notion that it was all an elaborate fabrication, you're essentially confronting the reality that the metamorphosis into a monstrous figure throughout the relationship reflects their true nature. This sudden epiphany may trigger a paralyzing freeze response, leaving rational thought in its wake. It's akin to grappling with the incomprehensibility of witnessing someone stabbed in the face. Doubts about the veracity of your perceptions or whether someone is jesting may assail you. The notion that someone could harbor such levels of violence and deceit seems utterly unfathomable. This rings particularly true if you've endured narcissistic gaslighting, abuse, trauma, or other unbearable mistreatment. The abrupt unveiling of the truth renders you speechless, grappling with the inconceivability of such malevolence. Secondly, the delightful moments you cherished were nothing but a manipulation of your emotions. Your cognitive dissonance acts as a barrier to accepting the harsh truth that the narcissist fabricated the joyful times shared. How could this be? An emotional conflict ensues. In moments of kindness, the narcissist was the wellspring of your insecurity and self-doubt, creating a schism in your consciousness. Distinguishing between authentic and contrived experiences becomes an intricate task. Recognizing that even the positive memories were deceptive, strategically employed to tether you to the relationship, marks a significant stride. It necessitates relinquishing a substantial portion of your existence. Clinging to the hope of joyful recollections is a preferred alternative, but conceding that they were an elaborate lie entails bidding farewell to the prospect of retrospection tinged with satisfaction and fondness. It's akin to acknowledging that the entire canvas of your past was shrouded in darkness and emptiness. To confess that the moments of joy were a mirage suggests a painful admission of being deceived, exploited, and manipulated by someone you once trusted. This is why unraveling the illusion of those seemingly good times can be an arduous task. The narcissist skillfully painted a picture of a dream only to unveil a catastrophic reality. Like their narcissistic counterparts, they initiate the relationship with grandiose promises, luring you into a captivating vision of an alluring future. The trance they induce, masquerading as the ideal future, blurs the lines between reality and illusion. When the veil lifts and you confront the hollowness of the promised future, the impact can be shattering. The declarations of love, financial security, and intimacy were nothing but illusions, leaving you in a world steeped in suffering and hardship. The narcissistic strategy of baiting and ensnaring you with false expectations and hollow promises served a single purpose, to fulfill their desires at your expense. The fourth point involves the narcissist's denial of privacy. Narcissists are infamous for denying those they'd harm the courtesy of privacy and closure. Rather than offering resolution, 
they abandon their victims, leaving a trail of unanswered questions. This perpetuates a cycle of uncertainty and doubt, hindering victims from forging ahead. The narcissist's incapacity to provide closure underscores their lack of regard for the relationship or the other person. Recognizing that closure must spring from within, grounded in personal experiences, is paramount. It cannot be expected from the narcissist. Discovering the peace and closure needed to forge ahead involves delving into one's emotions and comprehending the unfolding events. Recognizing the existence of narcissistic behavior in the world and educating oneself on narcissistic personality disorder is crucial. Liberation and recovery hinge on understanding the reality of the situation. Fifth, narcissists exploited you to acquire resources. Coming to terms with the realization that a narcissist has used and exploited you can be a profoundly impactful moment. It might evoke feelings of diminished self-worth, confidence and esteem. However, it is imperative to understand that the responsibility for this exploitation does not rest on your shoulders. The narcissist manipulated, gaslighted and distorted the truth to take advantage of you, not because of any inherent flaw within you. During the tumultuous period, you were in a state of fight, flight or paralysis, a survival mechanism within the relationship. The narcissist further exploited you by immobilizing your nervous system, hindering access to the reasoning part of your brain. This may induce a sense of regret, questioning why you allowed such exploitation. However, it's crucial to grasp that you had limited control over the situation. As you regain agency, feelings of unease may prompt questions like, how could I have allowed that? Or, why did I let that happen? Nevertheless, it's essential to recognize that the responsibility lies not with you and you are not accountable for the abuse. Acknowledging that you were treated as an object takes time and introspection, but is a pivotal step in the healing and moving forward process. In the intricate dance of manipulation, the narcissist exploited you, depleting your well of resources. Confronting the unsettling reality that your self-worth, self-respect and confidence were undermined can be a challenging journey. Once your utility diminished, you were cast aside, discarded like an expendable tool. This revelation carries a weight, hinting at manipulation and exploitation, yet it's vital to understand that the burden of remorse and shame is not yours to bear. Gaslighting and abuse served as the narcissist's tools to commandeer and exploit, trapping you in a realm where accessing the rational parts of your mind became a struggle, perpetuating a state of fight, flight or freeze. Now free from the toxicity of that relationship, gaining perspective might lead you to wonder, how could I have allowed this? Or why couldn't I break free? It's crucial to treat yourself with kindness, recognizing that the situation was far more intricate than it seems in hindsight. Embarking on a journey of self-compassion, embracing your authentic self, and engaging in healing practices are imperative. Acknowledge that you were not in control of the situation and that, at the time, you were doing what you perceived to be right. Embracing these truths is a pivotal step in breaking free from the web of the narcissist's manipulation. With that, I'll conclude today's video. Until our paths cross again,